reconciliation will work. But we ask yourself the question. Why? How can you reconcile if you've never been reconciled in the very first place? Is it, how can you reconcile if you've never been consulted in the first place? What's the story with the independent state um, that's supposed to be in the middle of South Africa? The indep okay, those countries that are independent. You know, when the Afrikaners, the Dutch, after slaves were set free in 1838, no, uh, they were, they were, they had another four years to, to live with the slaves. The slaves had to stay another four years with the masters. Yeah, so, um, but they had to stay another four years. That's why by 13, 18, 1838, you will see the comments of the Khrut trade, because now they are completely devastated. So by 1838, the Afrikaners will leave the Cape. And their journey of 40 years into the interland is going to start. And it is that 40 years of traveling into the interland, they're going to see, they're going to view themselves as now the chosen people because they're going to take that movement, their, their movement into the interland and the same religious river as the Israelis. You know, so that they, so that, so that they would look at, they would look at the journey into the interland as their gen, uh, as their exodus. So and uh, eventually they would establish the countries of Transvaal and of Free State. Now, when they entered Free State, we had already a war that was taking a unification war. You must know now wars waged by Africans were not wars of annihilation. Our wars that Africans was waging was about how much, how bigger you can make your tribe. So you assimilate. You uh, broke them. Yeah, you broke me. So there's no annihilation. So the, uh, and a nice example of that is when you look at the history of King Chaka. When he started off in 18, 1840, um, he was only a small clan. And then when he started to galvanize the people, he would, you become part of me or I destroy. And they would become, and that is why within 30 years, you saw this huge Zulu tribe that would emerge because there was no killing. No, but in, in one of in one of Chaka's expeditions, one of his one of his one of his warriors was not willing to take off, to bring back the booty. You know, he decided to flee Chaka, and he is going to flee to the north. His name was Musalikazi, and Musalikazi was eventually going to start a new tribe known as the Matabili people, which you will find to the south of what is today called Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe have two big groups, the Shona people, which is the originals, and then the renegade group of the Zulus that fled and moved north again. And that's so that you will find in south of Zimbabwe, it's the, um, the Matabili people, which is a mix of all the tribes and Zulu and then, of course, to the north, the Shona people. The Shona people is the same tribe that Robert Mugabe comes from. And then, of course, you will look look at the, the tribes to the south. They will have the surnames such as Komalo, um, Spo um, Piri, which is the tribes that, that you will find to the south. Um, okay, but what, as I said, so when the Dutch so th those two countries, so when the Dutch was invading those countries, mm. the British at the south and the coast um, are defeating the Zulus and the Kosas. This, so that the Sutu tribe, now when, this, when Musalikasi 
Now this when Musanikazi, when he is moving to the north and he's going to try to collect more the Sutus under the king called King Moseswe, they had a different way of fighting. They didn't confront you. They wouldn't go toe to toe like the Zulus. Instead, they would go they would go to a fortress. They would as they live in what is called the mountain kingdom. They would go up into the mountain at the place called Tababusiho, where they would then throw stones down. And so that the Zulus hated them for them say, these are not real men, they fight they they fight with stones. But so that when the Dutch arrive to take over their land, they would ask for protection from the British. So it became a British protectorate. The same with Botswana, also asking protection from, from the Dutch, who's invading their land, and then so that you see the emergence of Botswana being an independent, because it was protected by the British, and then the British eventually by 1966 would give them the independence. The same thing. Another country is Swaziland. They also they also were protected in, against against the Dutch, Dutch invasion. So those three countries became protectorates, but they were all surrounded by the other invaders, the Afrikaners. So that if you look at the older maps of of, of Africa, you will see the protectorate of Botswana land, protectorate of Lesotho and the protectorate, meaning, and they are part, they became part of what is called the Commonwealth countries, Commonwealth countries too, because they were, um, and they were never part of South Africa. But, uh, but most of their people have become work here, because this, they don't have much in their own countries. And they, they become very much like what has happened to Haiti, you know, you know, Haiti cannot really develop because America was never favorable because of their independence. And likewise, the French, so that today the Haitian people still have to pay the French because they, they took their freedom by force. Any other questions?